Hello, welcome to The Digital Orphanage, and I'm your host, Keith. This episode, we take a look at a 1990s multimedia computer marketed for the living room. If I ask you to name a computer from the 1990s that would look good under your television, or in your hi-fi stack, I'm certain most of you would say either the Philips CDI from 1990, or the Commodore CDTV from 1991. Both of those systems were failures and demonstrated that the technology wasn't yet advanced enough for families to want to share their main television with what was an expensive and underpowered home computer. So you wouldn't expect another company to try again unless they had something just a bit special, would you? Well, the year was 1995 and the company Italian IT manufacturer Olivetti. I present to you the Envision. Launched in late 1995, the Envision was available with either a 486DX4100 or a Pentium P75 processor. It came preloaded with Windows 95 and is essentially a standard PC compatible with a feature set tailored to a life under the family television. The model you see here is the P75, which was sold in the UK by retailers like Comet, Curry's, Dixon's, PC World and Tempo. It was also available to rent through Radio Rentals. I worked in the PC support call centre for Radio Rentals between 1996 and 1998, and this was one of the models we had fun helping customers with over the phone. As its name suggests, this model has a 75 MHz Pentium processor, a popular choice for a home computer at that time. From Argos, it would have cost you just short of £1,600. And remember, that was without a monitor. Only the size of a VHS video recorder, the Envision certainly is equipped with a good complement of connectors. Starting on the rear of the Envision, we have 3.5mm stereo mini jacks for sound out and in. But to make it easy to add it to your hi-fi stack, we also have stereo phono jacks, then parallel and serial, but interestingly, MIDI in and out, so very similar to the Commodore CDTV there. Then VGA, but here we have a switch for monitor and TV, because it, you can also switch it to TV mode so that you can connect it to a SCART socket on your TV or a SCART socket on your video recorder if you want to record your latest Duke Nukem session. Then power input and a power switch. On the side we have three card slots with a plastic blanking plate on the top and there also would have been one on the bottom because the machine only came with a fax modem card but at some point in the past this has had another card fitted so the plastic's been removed. Then if we look round the front, hidden behind a smart little flap is a standard 3.5 inch floppy drive. Then we have a display, audio mute, rewind, pause, stop, play and forward we have an infrared window which we'll come back to shortly, and then volume up and down. There's also an on and standby button, and again, we'll talk about that in a moment. We've also got a standard quad speed CD-ROM drive, nothing special there, but it is at least matching in color. Then we have, under a small flap here, a standard 15 pin PC analog joystick port. But then we have this flap here that comes up, and in fact, this part of the flap comes off. And that's because behind here is a microphone and headphone socket. Again, 3.5 millimeter mini jacks like you'd find on a normal PC. But then you've got this module here. And this is the infrared keyboard module. Because this computer came with its own infrared keyboard with trackball. And that meant you could seat it under your TV and sit up to five meters away and do your typing browse the internet, whatever you wanted to do. But what if you don't want to use it under your television set? Well, if we take off the flap here, we can 
remove the module. And behind are normal PS2 keyboard and mouse. Unfortunately, I don't have the infrared keyboard, so I'm going to have to use a standard PC keyboard and mouse through those sockets on the front. The other thing I'm missing is the small infrared remote control that was used for controlling some of the simpler features from your sofa. Now that we've taken a good look around the outside of the Envision, let's take a look inside. The case lid is simply held in place by two screws on either side and three on the back, and I've already removed those. And the case lid just lifts away. If we take a look inside, as you can see it's a fairly simple affair, with the P75 processor with a heatsink, and in front of that, 8 megabyte of RAM, and in front of that, two SIM slots that the previous owner has already populated with another 8 megabyte, giving 16 meg in total but the computer can take up to 72 megabyte of RAM. At the back, near the VGA socket, is the Trident 9470 video chipset, which is fairly underpowered and with only one mega VRAM, gives 640 by 480 in 16 million colors, 800 times 664,000 colors, and 1024 by 768 in only 256 colors. The maximum resolution on a TV would be 800 by 600. In the middle we have the expansion riser backplane with two 16-bit ISIS slots and two 32-bit PCI slots and you could use a combination of one PCI and two ISIS or two PCI and one ISA card because the PCI and the ISA in the middle share the same position. And in one of the ISA slots we have an included 8-bit fax modem card. But interestingly, hiding underneath is a daughter board connected to the motherboard and this was an optional extra and it's a hardware MPEG card which we'll see in action shortly. Here we also have another daughter board connected to the motherboard and that's for the SCART sockets. Interestingly, the power supply only supplies power to the motherboard. It doesn't supply power to any of the features like the CD-ROM drive, the floppy drive or the hard disk. They take their power directly from the motherboard. And the reason for that is so that the Envision can control those devices so that they can be powered down when they're not in use. And that's to do with the standby function on the front. So that's enough of looking around the outside and the inside. I think we've seen enough of that now. Let's get it powered on and see what it can really do. So now we've got it all connected up. Let's power things and see what happens. The Envision is powered up, brought up its BIOS screen and then gone to sleep. And it's displaying a small house symbol on its LCD screen. The on button is on, but it's on amber at the moment. And then we can press the standby button. The light goes green. The hard disk powers up again. And the hard disk in here is actually the most noisiest part of it. If you were to take this, fit in uh, an SSD to it, uh, it would be practically silent, I think. Ah, good old Windows 95.
But wait, what's this loading? Ollie Pilot? Well, Ollie Pilot was Olivetti's way of trying to make it easy to use from the TV. It's a skeuomorphic interface, which means it tries to relate what the computer's doing to things in real life. I don't know about you, but just like in my hallway, there's a large fountain and a fetching green checkered floor. Mm. Four doors. One leads you to back to the Windows desktop, but three lead you to rooms in this fictional house. The first is the study. Then the living room. And finally the child's room. There's no toilet or bathroom, so what you do then is up to you really. Let's take a look at the study first. And in true skeuomorphic interface style, it's populated with items that will actually take you to the Windows equivalent. So here we have a calculator. We click on the calculator, we get the Windows calculator. Over here we have a filing cabinet and it brings open the Explorer window so we can look at what's on our hard disk. In the child's room it's the same story and Olivetti have already associated some of the items with the free software that it came with. For example, the ball here is associated with Uncle Archibald which came with it. But I don't have that so I can't run it. And here we are in the living room. Some of the items aren't associated. For example, this newspaper. And you're free to associate those with whatever application you want. But now we're in the living room. Let's chill with some music. Because it comes with the MIDI socket, they've also put in some MIDI recording software. Let's load something. How about a bit of blues? Nice. This is only playing through the internal sound card, which was about par for the time. But it's no Roland. Feeling suitably chilled, let's stop that and watch a film. Before DVDs, there were VCDs, and they were MPEG-1 films put onto two CDs. They never took off in the West, but in the East, they were very popular. And this is a film that my sister brought back whilst abroad, and it's Risky Business. And this is disc two, so we'll jump straight into the film. You pop the CD in, And in Windows, there's a small application keeping an eye on the CD, and it monitors what it is. And it's correctly identified it as a video CD. And we can press the play button. And after a few seconds, we're in the film. Oh dear, Tom. What have you done to your dad's car? The quality is low, it's less than VHS, and that's why most people waited for DVDs to come out instead. On the front though, we can pause we can press the play and skip forward one second at a time. Or we can fast forward. And then we can press play. Excuse me, there's fault. If you write an excuse, I fail to attempt. It'll wreck my whole grade point out. If you just, if you just stop and listen to me, just for a minute, I'll explain. 
And if we press stop, we're back to the Ollie Pilot room. To give you an idea just how much power that MPEG card gave to the machine at the time, let's load Windows Media Player. And if we load in that same MPEG file, you can see what a slideshow it is. Oh dear, P75 is working its heart out trying to render this screen. Totally unwatchable. As well as movie CDs, it can also use Kodak Photo CDs, and it can play music CDs. The display on the front, as with the VCD, displays the number of tracks and the time for each track. On the front, you've got two speakers. They're only small, but they're okay. But don't forget, you can connect it to a hi-fi. And the volume up and down. It can actually go quite loud. And at any time you need to mute it, or stop. And all of that without anything happening on screen. So you can carry on doing whatever you wanted to on your computer, your spreadsheets, whatever game you wanted to play. One other trick the Envision's got up its sleeve is I can press the standby button at any time everything powers down and it's gone into a low power state. And that's why the motherboard needs to control the power to the drives. And then I can press the standby button again and up it springs back to life exactly where I left it. And if I'm really finished, then of course, I can shut the computer down like normal. If you wanted to use one of these today, you would replace the hard disk with an SSD or a compact flash, and you'd uprate the CD-ROM drive to a DVD drive, uh, and something that can also read CDRs, because this one struggles, and it certainly doesn't touch CDRWs. And once it's finished, you're safe to switch off. And just like Commodore before them, Olivetti made available a matching monitor, keyboard and mouse for those who didn't want to use it with the family TV. So, with the Envision, was Olivetti successful where Philips and Commodore had not? Well, no. It was an absolute miserable failure and by the end of 96 was being heavily discounted just to get rid of it. In use, it was slow, it was buggy. Similarly priced P75s worked much better and were more expandable. People didn't know what to do with it. VCDs weren't readily available, so people didn't even want to watch videos on them. Certainly from my experience, working on a help desk supporting people with these, it didn't work very well. What do you think? Is this something you'd have had under your TV? Is it something you'd like under your TV now? Because it was a failure, they are quite rare. I was very surprised to see this one, and I'll be returning it to the Museum of Computing in Swindon, and hopefully getting it on display. Do you like what I'm doing here at the Digital Orphanage? If so, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll see when I've got a new video for you to watch. And I've got some great stuff coming this year. Until next time, goodbye. Let me see your identification. We don't need to see his identification. Follow me. Move on. Move on.